Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're doing a little bit of looking back, if you will. You see, we've been together here, you know, the longest of us, for maybe four years now on air together, let alone the second channel and the blog. I, you know, the job is to have opinions and takes on, on certain topics in our credit and finance space. But over a certain amount of time, things change. You change, your thoughts and habits change. I've changed my opinion and on a few, a few things. And I want to go through today and talk about, you know, what I've changed my mind on and what why. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, of course, you know, the goal here, as we said, is to, you know, you're supposed to have opinions and takes on things and different credit card strategies, but I've changed my mind on a lot. And, and historically, you know, it's kind of hard to change your mind on things because one, it's already in video and, you know, it, it's just hard to go back and say, oh, you know, I changed my mind and here's why. You see it a lot in sports if someone drafts the player and they end up just not being very good. You'll generally just stick with that player because you don't want to admit that you're wrong. But I, I don't think changing your mind necessarily means you're wrong. Maybe it just means circumstances have changed. So uh, let's go through it. No particular order here. And of course, you can play along at home. Let me know if there's some things you've changed your mind on over the years, or if you, you know, disagree with me, whatever, it'll be fun. So uh, one of the biggest things I used to say was, or folks would ask me a lot in the Q&A is like, would you get those little credit cards for those small bonuses? I mean, like an act, well, struggle active cash for $200 or, you know, something like that. A card, but like a $200 bonus doesn't really move the needle much. Um, and, and plus the, you know, the active cash wouldn't necessarily be a card you need in your rotation, uh, you know, per se. And I used to say, no, I wouldn't bother with it, but I've definitely changed my mind on that now. And now I'm at the point as I play a lot more aggressive cash back, that uh, I would get like any car that I can to get a promotional offer on. And the reason I really changed my mind on this is because like, unfortunately, I think it just gets easier to spend money as you get older, uh, especially, you know, it, it's, I don't want I never want to make it sound like you're just some kind of real estate mogul here. But when you have other houses, things go wrong. And when things go wrong, they're usually expensive things. So you look around like, how can I offset this with a credit card, which makes sense. And normally I use business credit cards for that because they have the larger spend requirement with the larger bonus payout but then it gets good to you and like well car insurance comes up and that's a few hundred dollars every six months well you know i can take an active cash and at the time of taping the active cash was spent i don't have the car but i'm just using this for an example is spend five hundred dollars to get two hundred dollars back i gotta spend five hundred dollars i might as well get two hundred dollars and so that's kind of changed my mind over time as it as unfortunately gets easier to spend money plus i've also become very obsessed with how much money i can take from banks and i think as you play cash back you start to look around like mm, you could run out of cards fairly quickly. I mean, you know, because if you're talking about Chase, kind of America Express, Bank of America, City, Wells Fargo, a little bit of U.S. Bank, Capital One gets harder to get. But like you, you play this long enough, like you'll run out of cards if you're not, you know, trying to cycle through them and everything. So I've definitely changed my mind on that. And I've been getting a lot more credit cards, especially as I've, you know, reached my peak Chase status. I've got doubles of Chase cards. I have four Freedom cards. I've had the Sapphire twice. I've had multiples of the ink cards. I've had all the ink cards. So now that I don't have to mind and tend to my 524 status, like, sure, why not? If I can qualify and I can get it and I can hit the spend, yeah, I sign up for it. Now, to that point, uh, another one you folks have heard me probably talk about a little bit is maxing out those category cards, specifically freedom cards. I used to do this all the time. Now, it's a lot easier when you have one because just $1,500 in spend. So whatever, when we're getting to the end of the category, I would just go to that place, if it's grocery store, gas station, whatever, and I would primarily just buy a bunch of Amazon gift cards or Apple gift cards or gift cards that I knew I was going to use relatively soon. And it's fine when you do have one freedom. I still think it makes sense when you have one freedom. Uh, when you have two, a little bit difficult. By the time you get to four, I mean, it's just too much to max them all out. Then you think about your other category cards, your your cash plus, your Huntington a business card, you name it. it. You end up with way too much money in gift cards. And this is kind of what led me to want to go the route of building out the best 5% back setup that I can. So then the option isn't how do I have to lock in 5%? It's more so at the start of every quarter, I have enough options at my disposal to always be getting 5% with minimal gift card nonsense and, you know, tomfoolery, I guess you could say. Uh, it's just not good to put that much money into your Amazon balance. At one point, I think I had, I've had multi-thousands of dollars in Amazon before. Granted, I spent it, like this whole camera setup is from Amazon dollars. This, all this was based on Amazon as well. Uh, so I, I used it, but it wasn't, you know, the best thing in the world, which brings us to the next point, kind of an adjacent point, which is not 
storing so much value in in the gift card game. Again, it's not really good to do. It's not really a store. It's a store of value in the literal sense, but it's not really a place you want to put a bunch of money. In addition to that, uh, these companies do get sensitive. Like Amazon one time did lock my account and stole my gift card balance until I showed them receipts for buying them. And just luckily, I happened to still have the receipts like in the trash can. I hadn't thrown, thrown out the bag yet. Uh, so that can happen. So it's generally not good. Plus, with the second channel, Run on the Bank, a lot of times you hit bank promotional requirements, you need to do some debit card spend. So I would do $1 Amazon reload. So between all of those and just maxing out cards, it just wasn't really that that it didn't make a lot of sense it was getting poor and that's kind of why i picked up the amazon visa card as well because now it keeps me from doing that because there's not aside from doing the debit card reloads on the other channel for those requirements it's really not worth it to have amazon money anymore because now i can get five percent on amazon whenever i want Lastly, I got lucky uh, because at the time of taping, Amazon has blocked one of my favorite strategies, which is take your Amazon gift card balance and use it to buy third-party gift cards. So, for example, like these studio displays or even the iPhone 15, I got this using taking my Amazon balance and buying Apple gift cards and then buying the phone from Apple, or buying the, the studio displays from Apple. You can't do that anymore. So I got lucky because I just emptied my Amazon balance before they started blocking it. They didn't block it with any type of announcement. And so if you were doing that, sure, you can still buy items from Amazon, but you have a lot of money tied up and it's going to be much harder to move. So uh, there is that. Now, two, on playing on the gift card space, the Visa reloads. A lot of times you can go to office supply stores. They'll run sales like Staples or Office Max. Well, they'll waive the activation fee uh, on, on Visa reloads. And people like to take the Ink Cash card, which gives 5% back at office supply stores, and do that. I no longer do that. I used to be really big into it, but it, it's so much of a hassle now because the stores don't want to be bothered. The individual stores don't want to be bothered. A lot of times they hide the gift cards. They have to get a manager to bring out the gift cards. They put limits on you. They don't like doing it because it's the same thing someone would do with a, a, a stolen credit card was come and do that. So they, they'd rather not be bothered with it and potentially get hit with chargebacks and all that. Similarly, it's also hard to liquidate them now. Uh, you know, some places, Western unions will take them because technically you can buy a money order with a debit card. It is a debit card, but a lot of places don't want to do it because it's still suspicious activity. So it's been harder to liquidate. Uh, you know, even if you use them at the gas station, for example, you know, at least here, gas stations here in Michigan, you still have to go in and tell them how much you want on it. They don't allow them to work at the pump. I've heard it's different in other places, but here you can't do it. So it's really just become inconvenient. And again, if we go back to the just having 5% cards across the board, it's really not that necessary anymore. Sure, they, there are scenarios where it could come in handy, like those catch-all cases here and there. But you know, for that, that's why I went Bank of America Preferred Rewards. At least I can get 26 back on things uh, with the unlimited cash. So I've definitely changed my mind on that. I uh, will throw in some travel ones here. You know, I've never, in the beginning of the channel, I think that was when I was starting to get the plat. I had the platinum and the gold card from American Express and the Delta Platinum. Uh, you know, and I don't love those cards, but you know, I guess I've realized more so I'm not, I don't travel in the way you need to to maximize travel points. And that's kind of made me switch to all cash back. Granted, as we said in the beginning, I've just become obsessed with how much money I can take from banks. And granted, miles still count as money. But for me, I don't really travel the way you need to to maximize this stuff out. Um, and I got tired of having to play the effective annual fee game. Like I'd get really upset with having to go to select places to use my Uber allowance for Uber Eats pickup. It was just very annoying. I didn't care for it. Um, so I mean, if you've been watching me as of late, then you kind of already know that. But uh, that was a big change from the beginning of it. Uh, on the travel topic as well, I'm kind of at the point now where I'll just pay for the thing I need. Uh, you know, so I used to be a staunch, like you fly super economy in the very back of the plane, but we still fly Delta because we buy Delta Hub and that's, that's just how I'm going. I know how it works. It's easy. But uh, I don't check a bag, any of that. I refuse to check a bag. But you fly in the back of the plane, you know, you get on the plane last, which isn't a problem except for all the overheads are taken. And sometimes the flight attendants, they just tell you it's full when it's really not. So they can shove off from the gate and count it as an on-time departure. Oh, that's a whole nother argument. So my point here is now I'm much more inclined to just pay for like the Comfort Plus seat, which isn't, it works for me because I'm only like 5'10", like maybe like 180. 
I know you can't tell how strong I am on camera, but uh, I'm not like that tall. So the Comfort Plus works for me, but I'm kind of like kind of over it, like sitting in the back. If we're going a short haul from here to like, uh, I used to fly on occasion from like, here from Michigan to Pittsburgh, which is like a 45 minute flight. No, we're flying in the back here to Florida, two hours back. But anything like longer than that, three, four plus, I'll pay for the Comfort Plus, which isn't even worth it really because you know, I didn't know this, but apparently you just get like alcohol when you're sitting up there, but I don't drink. So it's really not worth it. I'm just paying for literally the added comfort, the ability to just have a spot for your bag, and the ability to pull out the laptop and do some work if you need to. Like the last place I went, I was like, well, I got to make this Sunday show for here, and I don't want to do it cramps, and I might as well just do it. Um, so I've definitely changed my mind on that. I'll just suck it up and pay for the comfort now, I guess. So if you wanted one travel thing, I guess that's it. But I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't believe it's worth it in the least bit, but you know, they've conveniently packaged all these things that I want up front for like a few extra hundred dollars. So I guess I'm just going to do it. Uh, but again, you don't get the best value for Sky Miles anyway. So I might as well just buy Delta gift cards at a 5% card in the category and just do it that way. Uh, that's kind of how, how I look at it. So overall, I mean, those are some things I've changed my mind. on. I mean, we could go down the list uh, through more, I'm sure. But those are kind of probably like the big staples of the channel, gift card strategies, 5% cards, things like that you know, that I focus on getting all the cards. So of course, uh, you know, let me know down below. There's some things you've changed your mind on, or you can tell me just how terrible it is that I changed my mind on things. I'd love to get your thoughts either way. But of course, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you find it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, we're posting content just like this every single week and right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was on credit and finance. And of course, every single day over on ProfitableContent.com. That is the channel's blog where we have the latest news stories. We have bank promotions and we have credit card offers. So if you want to feel the obsession of taking all the bank's money, well, that is a great place to start. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you very soon in the next one.